The economy system in Counter-Strike is what separates Valve's premier FPS from the majority of other mainstream shooters. You have to buy weapons and utility instead of unlocking them through level ups like in Call of Duty or Battlefield. Which can be tricky to understand for both new and old players alike, especially after the newest updates they've added until now. My name is Brayden and welcome to Valve Guides. This video is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Start with the famous $5 starter set or build your own kit with the link in the description below. The economy is arguably the most important fundamental of learning CSGO, as it plays a part in virtually everything you do when playing in competitive. However, unlike AIM and GameSense, you can't train your economy. You just have to do your homework and learn how it works. So to help you do that, we've compiled 10 easy tips and tricks to help you use economy to its full advantage. Our goal is for you to have at least a basic understanding on how the CSGO economy works, as well as for you to learn how to apply it in your own game to maximize advantages. So without further ado, here are 10 key points that you need to know to understand CSGO's ever evolving economy system. Number 10, saving. In Counter-Strike, when you die, you lose everything that you bought previously. This includes Diffuse kits, armor, and even a Zeus. Because of this, players will want to save their utility and weapons going into the next round. Saving basically means hiding at the end of a round that you know you're going to lose in order to stay alive for the next round, to keep your gear in other words. Saving is a very good tactic to use if you know you will have little money to buy if you're killed. You can also save if your teammate doesn't have the money to buy the next round so that you can give him a weapon and then buy your own. I'm sure that you've all been in a game where you're in a clutch situation and your teammate is screaming at you to save the op. However, in a scenario when you're not that outnumbered by the enemies, saving isn't always the best choice. If you're in a 1v2 clutch and the bomb hasn't been planted or has been planted only a few seconds before, you should 9 times out of 10 go for the win. Taking rounds is much more efficient than saving for an M4A4 for your teammate who might not appreciate it. Pro tip, if you're going to save, make sure that you're hiding in a position that you won't be killed by the bomb explosion or by an enemy. There's nothing worse than waiting 30 seconds for the bomb to explode just for you to be killed by the explosion or an enemy coming around the corner looking for you. Number 9, Full Eco. Some players don't realize that there is actually a difference between a full eco and just an eco. We'll discuss this in the next tip. If your teammate calls for a full eco, you should not buy anything at all. A full eco is most efficient when you know that the next round you will be able to buy full. With recent updates to the economy, eco rounds are made much more rare, which means you'll be hearing this called less frequently. A full eco should only be used if you are one round behind a full buy, because then you'll want to save everything you have in order to buy grenades and smokes as well as your primary weapon. You need to remember that the team's entire economy is extremely important. If you all have a significant difference in the amount of money you have, you won't be able to play as a team. This means that it is vitally important that you follow the same economy calls so you have the same equipment throughout the game and you won't be staggered. This will definitely help you with things like executes and retakes as you know that you and your team will have similar grenades, similar gear, and similar advantages. Number eight, eco. An eco round does not always mean buying zilch. Normally an eco round is called because the next round will also be an eco. This means that you can sacrifice a few precious dollars to buy a P250 or a smoke to give you a tiny bit more of a chance to plant the bomb, which gives you extra money or even better wins you the round. Now that there is a new economy update, this type of economy round will most likely be favorable as there won't be many cases where you're going to double eco anymore. When in an eco, you should try to utilize things such as smoke grenades, completely smoking out a bomb site on T side will allow you to rush in and plant the bomb, meaning you'll get at least $300 if you win or lose. If you manage to win the round because of the bomb plant, you will get $3,500. If you're on an eco on the CT side, buying grenades will help you greatly. Stacking a bomb site and throwing nades towards the T side push will not only cause devastating damage, but allow you to use your USPS to one tap. If you're stacking B site on Inferno, for example, throwing five grenades down into banana will more than likely give you a few kills. Number 7, Half Buy. Half buy is a term that not many people actually know the meaning of. Do I buy a gun with no armor? Do I buy an armor with no gun? It can be confusing to some. Most in-game leaders say that half buy means something like buying a UMP, an armor, something cheap, but not as bad as a pistol. These rounds can sometimes be hard to play, especially on CT side against AK-47s, however they're not impossible to win. When playing on a half buy, it would be a good idea to stack a site again. Using molotovs to prevent pushes onto the site will also help you hold against 
against a bomb plant. When on this sort of buy, you want to be playing for kills rather than the win. Killing someone with an MP9 and then picking up their AK-47 will benefit you greatly the next round. When on a half buy, try not to get carried away with what you buy. I constantly see people buy a UMP and armor and then a full nade set and a diffuse kit and this is just a waste of money because you may as well have full buy. The only thing you didn't full buy was your primary weapon. Ugh. Also, just because you have an SMG doesn't mean that you should play the same as if you have a rifle. You will not want to take fights against players with AKs or M4s as you're heavily outgunned. Number 6. Full Buy This is exactly what it says. You buy everything. When buying as a CT on not the most money, you want to buy a rifle, armor, and then grenades. Always buy a diffuse kit. Last, as long as someone on the team has one, you can pick it up if they die. So you can win a round much easier with a smoke grenade than a diffuse kit as long as you aren't wasting time and you use it properly. If you've been ecoing for a few rounds, you can also drop your teammates. This is also a key part of the economic system. For example, if your teammate bought an op the round before and lost it, chances are they're gonna be pretty low on cash. So buying him a rifle or an SMG will help them get back on their feet to start fragging again. Whilst on a full buy is going to be the perfect time to save if you're low on money at the end of the round. Saving a rifle in a 1v3 situation will allow you to drop a gun to your teammate and then buy yourself another rifle the next round. As mentioned before, the team economy is vital so make sure that you're keeping track of others money and make sure that you make it clear what type of round you are playing and try not to mess the economy up for your entire team. There is a term glass cannon which is where you buy an op without armor. This can be risky to do however having an op on the team will help you win rounds so sometimes you might have to take the high risk high reward option. Really quickly before we go forward we want to take some time and give a quick shout out to today's sponsor Dollar Shave Club. Unlike risky full buy rounds in CSGO Dollar Shave Club is the safe safest bet when it comes to getting high quality razors and toiletry products for the best price. With Dollar Shave Club, you get to customize the perfect kit of things that you need to have you looking good, feeling good, and smelling good, all while having it delivered to your door, saving you the hassle of having to go to the store and sift through tons of overpriced products just so that you can take care of yourself. Do you and your wallet a favor by checking out Dollar Shave Club using the link in the description and giving it a try. There's no hidden fees or contracts you can cancel at any time. Thanks again to Dollar Shave Club for making this video possible and making hygiene so much more simple. Let's get back to CSGO. Number five, reset. Unlike previous CSGO economies where the other team had the opportunity to reset you, the new economy allows the game to have more buy rounds and less eco in four situations within the game. Reset basically means that before the update, if you lost a round, you would get a loss bonus. If you lost another round, you would get a two round loss bonus. This has now been changed. If you're on a max loss bonus and you lose a round, you will then be on fourth round loss bonus. This has drastically change the amount of gun rounds that make games more entertaining. It also removes some of the impact that economy can have on the game. Gun rounds are much more common now, meaning that aim and game knowledge can be used in more places more often. However, this means that it will be harder to use strategies such as anti-ecos and the enemy team will have more money than they would have a few months back. Number 4. Gun Reward In CSGO, you get different amounts of money depending on the weapon you kill the enemy with. SMGs will give you $600, meaning that they are great to use in a half buy as you get double the amount of money that you would with a rifle, a UMP pays for itself with two kills. Also, if you manage to hit some nutty shots, you can also do some good damage to their team, and it pays your UMP off at the same time, making profits by using the weapon. Shotguns give you $900, so these are going to be perfect to use against teams on an eco as they are a one shot to the head without armor. They pack a heavy punch and give very good rewards, three times the amount of rifles. This means if you win pistol round on T side, CTs are going to be buying pistols, maybe be with or without body armor, meaning that your sawed off is going to be ripping through the enemy, giving you a hefty amount of cash in the process. Rifles are simple, they give you $300 per kill, which is a decent amount, however not crazy, which is why after you win pistol round, you should really be thinking about buying something like a UMP, an MP9 that will rip apart an eco team. Ops give the least amount of money with $150 per kill, however this is the price you have to pay for an extremely accurate one hit kill sniper. In the hands of someone who can use it well, the op can be the most important gun on the team. It can prevent pushes and provide crazy amounts of damage to full buy players. Number 3. In the new economy update, the way you earn money from losing rounds has been changed. First off, you're no longer going to earn $1400 from losing pistol round, you now earn $1900 which means that you can full buy quicker into the game after losing pistol round. 
This has changed the meta a lot, as before, winning pistol round meant that you would have a significant advantage at the start of the game. You will now get up to 5 loss bonuses, which will take you up to $3,400. This caps at 5 rounds, so until you win another round, you will be getting $3,400 per round. Then when you win a round, your loss bonus becomes the 4th bonus, which is $2,900 and so on. On T side, you will get $3,250 plus $300 for a win. In a bomb plant. However, if you're on a loss bonus streak, you will get your loss bonus plus $800 for a bomb plant. On CT side, you will get $3,500 for defusing the bomb and $3,250 by winning time. T side will also get $3,500 for the bomb detonation. Number two, using the economy to your advantage. If you master the economy, take note on the amount of rounds that the enemy team has won or lost, and you will be able to work out how much money they will have each round estimated. This can help you in many ways to choose which strategies to use. If you know that they have low money then you can prepare for a rush onto site. It is very common for eco rounds to be pushes so utilizing things like molotovs and grenades will help you prevent a site being overwhelmed. Economy rounds as a CT is a bit harder than T side. The best strategy would be to stack a site and try to get the bomb carrier killed as early as possible. Because of this being a T pushing on an eco CT you will need to be prepared for a nade stack and site stack. The CTs will be playing more recklessly because they have nothing to lose so be prepared for anything. A great way to work out how much money the enemy team team has is using the tab menu. In the middle, you will see who has won each round as well as how many have been won in a row. This is vital information to keep in your head as much as you can. Number one, keeping track of the economy. Keeping track of the economy will help you to be organized. If you plan to execute a site with smokes and grenades but only have enough for a rifle, you will have messed up the team's strategy. When taking the game seriously, dedicate an in-game leader who will keep track of everyone's money. Check before buying something expensive, as he might have something planned for the next round, which you will need money for. Making sure that you prepare for the rounds ahead of time will keep you organized. If you're playing with friends, you can then create different tactics and strategies to use before the game. Try to play with someone who understands the game a bit better than you, as they can guide you through the economy process and teach you how to become a better player. Playing for a team will help you dramatically. You'll have a dedicated in-game leader who will teach you things like money management, and keeping track of everything that you're doing. Common mistakes like forcing when not needed are game losers, which can be ironed out by a good coach or in-game leader. That just about does it for this video. We hope you've learned a lot about the new economy system in CSGO. If you enjoyed the video and thought it was helpful, it would be really amazing if you could share it. Helps us out a lot. This has been our far most requested video and I want to thank you guys for being patient with us. We really appreciate you guys being vocal about what you want to see as it makes our lives a lot easier. Thanks to everyone who supports our sponsors. Dollar Shave Club is a company we were using before they reached out to us. It's an honor to work with them. And with the way YouTube is now, those sponsors make it possible for our team to keep making videos. As you guys know, every so often we put something at the end of our videos, especially for our loyal subs. So if you want a $25 Steam gift card, let us know your favorite CSGO moment, whether that be personally something you experienced, something you saw on stream, anything. We have a couple gift cards to give away, so don't be afraid to enter. Thank you guys for staying until the end of the video. My name is Brayden. Stay amazing, and I will see you next time.